So here's a question that everyone asks, who owns the data? Before I answer that online, let's just look at what happened in the offline world. In this case, a consumer walks into a store and they buy something. When they buy something, they interact with three parties. They interact with the retail store, they interact with the credit card company, and they are the third party, the consumer. So they've created a piece of data about themselves, and in the last 20 or 30 years, what you've seen is that data is owned by the retailer, it's owned by the credit card company, and there are these data cooperatives that pool the, the transaction data amongst many retailers. So who owns the data? I don't know. I, that's a really tough question to answer. But now that we've seen that analogy, let's look online. There are all sorts of deep philosophical problems about who owns the data. There are three parties in this transaction, at least, just to simplify it, and that's a consumer who visits a website. The website puts all, the, the publisher puts in all the money to create the data and the interaction and the experience of that website, and then an advertiser subsidizes that by paying the publisher. So who owns the data? Burning Man did something to their legal contract a while ago where if you went there and you took a picture, it was actually their property. So if you tried to use it, they had the right uh, over the use of those images, and that caused um, some problem. The EFF was upset about that. But they actually had very good intentions. They wanted to keep Burning Man to be a non-commercial event, and that's why they did it. And so what you'll find is, if you remember a while back, Facebook had, had this event where they were saying, when you delete your account, they won't delete your data because you've already shared your emails and your pictures with other people, and, and then they had to change the terms of service because of the uproar. The, the issue is this is a deep philosophical question full of nuances that people like to simplify and just say, well, the publisher owns the data. No, no, the advertiser owns the data. No, the consumer owns the data. I don't have the answer. I wish I did. Here's what you can do, though. Instead of getting into the deep philosophy, there are rights about the transfer of that data. There are rights to, to derivative uses of that data. And if you're the one who creates it, you can impose the rights on the others that participate with you. So if you're a publisher and an advertiser comes to your site, you can have in your terms and conditions something that tells them whether or not they can use that data and in what ways they can use that data. And if they want to advertise and they sign your T's and C's, you've protected yourself in some way. So rather than get lost in the philosophy of it, remember to start investing in the right T's and C's that determine not just the use of the data, but also the derivative uses of that data and the time frames and the privacy implications. There's also a question about time value of data. So some data, if you're looking at lower funnel data, someone looking for a flat panel TV or a trip to Hawaii, that data is over time going to decrease in value, right? Because they're gonna eventually go to Hawaii or they're gonna buy the flat panel TV and that search that they did is no longer gonna be relevant for you. So what we did here is we mapped out the time value of data for um, a considered good. Um, and as you see, over a month, that the first few days are just staggeringly high. That data is so useful in the beginning, you have to use it and make sure you have um, as maximum reach and high frequency in the early days, overall it starts to go down um, quite quickly. And um, one of the advantages of having a marketplace is that the, the buyers determine the value of the data. The marketplace doesn't centrally decide the value of data. So we showed some examples here. What you see is people reading about cars, just reading, they're not, they're not in a shopping funnel. That data is, was valued just above uh, around 60 cents. But then when you looked at people in market for cars, the people in the marketplace valued that data um, uh, quite a bit more. It looks like it's just uh, under $2. And then when you looked at data about people looking for luxury in market cars, the prices went above $3. So there's almost a 6x difference between the people just reading about cars versus people researching in a shopping funnel for a luxury car. And again, that was discovered by the marketplace. It wasn't centrally imposed. We have another um, uh, data source there, past purchases for toys and games. It's less of a considered good. The point is, you know, there's about 30,000 attributes in our marketplace, and it's, it's really the market that determines the price of the, the value of the data, not us. I have four trends that I'd like to talk about. The first one is 2011 is the year of the data management platform where people embrace their own data and start mixing and matching external sources and gain control so they stop leaking their data assets, and then they plug their segmentation everywhere. The second trend I would look at, is, and this is gonna take a little bit more time, is that all advertising will be data informed. Right now, people talk about data as this thing called a behavioral buy, or a demographic buy, or a retargeting buy. All advertising is gonna be data informed. Sooner or later, search will embrace external data. Social advertising already is pretty much data driven right now, but even when you just buy a social data buy, you will be able to overlay it with external data to see what you're getting out of the audiences that you got. Same thing with mobile. Mobile's gonna start embracing data once we clear the fair use 
uh, issues that we have to clear in terms of privacy for mobile. Video's already embracing data, and if I ever saw peanut butter and chocolate, it would be video and data, because that's where you really don't have context and you need external context. So all data is gonna be uh, advertising. Uh, all advertising will be data-driven. Um, Pixels are gonna go the way of the carrier pigeon. Right now, it's a very inferior way to transfer data. You go to a website and 32 pixels fire, and then 10 of those pixels serially fire another five, and it slows down the page load time, and it affects your search rankings, and it's a form of leakage where you can't control. And so other server-to-server -server techniques are gonna, are gonna take hold fairly quickly, I, I predict. And the last one is that it's not just gonna be D DR advertising that drives data, it's also gonna be brand advertising. I predict that about half of the dollars coming into the data market pretty soon is gonna come from uh, uses from brand advertisers that they wanna make sure they're getting engagement with the right audience um, and, and data is gonna give them that.